Hi, I'm Jason Barnard and welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Today I'm going to share with you my cheat sheet for Google-friendly FAQs. Now this strategy works for any site. I'll be using WordPress to illustrate, but you can use it on your site whether you use WordPress or not. And right at the end there's a fun part. I pull Google's leg a little bit and I have a bit of fun playing with Google's algorithm. The FAQ debate, accordions or one per page, is now over. Why? Firstly, because a user coming from Google, searching through those accordions for the specific questions that they just asked, is not a great user experience. Number two, Google won't give you the featured snippets, or at least if it does, it won't show them very adequately for you. And that comes on to the meta title conundrum. I call it the meta title conundrum or the H2 dilemma. The problem is that Google will show the meta title as the blue link. So it won't show the question. Here, it's managed to integrate the question into the answer, but maybe that isn't satisfactory for you and I don't think it's perfect for the user. Now, Gary Ilias told me that we should not expect Google to be using these H2s as blue links any time in the near future. So we need to concentrate on the meta title, which means we need to have one page per question answer if we want the question to appear as a blue link. Now for the examples, I'm going to use WordPress and Yoast. Why do I say Yoast? Because Yoast are writing the rule book and defining the way we write schema markup. They've created a modulable system that is incredibly powerful and fairly easy to deal with. WordPress represents 36% of the web. Google is investing heavily in WordPress. They're investing in speed, in AMP, in plugins, but they're not investing in schema markup because Yoast are doing that, and Yoast represent 14% of the web. So the way Yoast are writing schema today is the way Google will best understand it tomorrow. Oh yeah, and it's really easy to deal with. If you write schema markup badly, slowly, Yoast is perfect for you because they write it quickly, efficiently, and incredibly accurately. Here's an example I did for my musical instruments, the musical instruments that I play, and this is where I'm gonna play with Google later on. We have a question, we have an answer, it's an FAQ box, and it's a Yoast FAQ box within a Gutenberg block. And if you're not using WordPress, use the Yoast hack. I'll let you read that. So setting up a WordPress site for development, installing Yoast, doing your schema markup in Yoast, and then copy pasting it into your site or getting your technicians and developers to use it as a template for your site is a perfect way to go about writing great schema markup incredibly easily. On to the interesting part. When is FAQ a good strategy? For me, there are three main use cases. One is where the user is researching a product, researching a solution to a problem they have, but they don't know yet what that solution might be. Second is when they're about to buy, when they know what the solution is likely to be and they're trying to choose the best solution for them. And the third is post sales, and I think we often forget this. You want to make sure that the correct answer gets to your clients, even when they search in Google. Don't imagine they come straight to your site to search for that solution they probably search in Google. You want your answer to be number one. You want your answer to be the one that they see. Now, what are the wins? What real estate are we gonna get on the SERP with this technique? Number one is the featured snippet. Right at the top, in the middle, front and center. Here's Apple with a post sales featured snippet that gets their client right to the answer straight away. These featured snippets, though, are very good for research, about to buy, and post sales. So you might want to look at all three types of FAQs with the feature snippet in mind. People also ask, that gives you some really nice real estate, even when people haven't asked the specific question you're answering. That's also very good for research, about to buy, and post sales. Voice search and virtual assistants, Schema markup is going to push actions and skills into the future. You really want to make sure you've got the schema markup in place, and that is what this technique does. Voice assistants are great for research and post sales, not so much for about to buy. 
Brand SERPs, my favorite topic, I love brand SERPs. Here we have Google appearing as a featured snippet for their own product. Once again, they're getting right to their clients, they're getting their answer straight to the clients and making sure somebody else doesn't give the answer that might even be wrong. These are perfect for about to buy and post sales. About to buy being when people are searching for your brand specifically and you just need to tip them over the top to get them to buy. And the blue links, they're a bonus, that's ironic. We were all so obsessed by the blue links and now they don't seem to matter very much anymore. You'll get the blue links with this technique even if you don't get the other advantages. Blue links, of course, are good for every stage of the purchase process. Question, why does this work so well? Schema markup is really powerful. It's the future. Google are insisting on it. Yoast are working very hard on it. We all agree in the industry that schema markup is incredibly important. I think it's very important specifically for understanding and partly for deliverability. It enhances deliver deliverability and arguably gains deliverability. Jonah Alderson talks about blocks. Jonah Alderson is the guy at Yoast developing this schema markup. The idea of blocks is that it breaks the web down into chunks or blocks that Google finds easier to understand and digest. And Cindy Crump talks about fraggles. A similar idea to blocks, except we have a fragment with a handle and that really helps with deliverability. And I find this very interesting. The idea that Google will reach into your content, grab the handle, pull the fragment out, and put it in the SERP. And that's a very good description of how the feature snippet works. So fraggles, blocks, and schema markup make this technique work incredibly well. The anatomy of the landing page is very, very important because if you do manage to get the user to click on your link to come onto your page, what are you gonna show them? You need to show them the answer to the question. Remember, the person has searched Google. It's asked Google the question, and Google has recommended your answer. So your answer needs to be accurate, and it needs to be clear, and it needs to satisfy Google's user. Google's watching to see if that user goes back and searches for the same thing again or something similar again. If they do, then you haven't satisfied them. So make sure you give a clear and accurate answer to the question that has been asked. And while you are here, have a call to action and an explanation of what you do. Who are you? What do you do? Please come and do business with me. A lot of companies forget this. And I think it's incredibly important if you're going to pull people in, especially in those first two, research or about to buy, you want to make sure you get your product ideas across so that the people then know who you are, what you do, and what you can provide for them commercially. Here's my brilliant design of what a landing page should look like. This is great for research and about to buy. We have a lovely who we are and what we do with a call to action on the right hand side. And if it's a client, propose other things they might be interested in about your company. Engage them as much as you possibly can. Now the proof is in the pudding and this is the fun part. This is the part I really enjoyed. I was doing this yesterday and it was great, fun, very interesting and incredibly insightful. I searched for where I was born because of course it's an information I don't have. It tells me I was born in Leeds, United Kingdom, so I created a FAQ page that gives that answer on my site. And bingo! Within five minutes, I was integrated into that feature snippet with my text. No links, no corroboration, Google trusts me. I tried to give an opinion, Google wouldn't have it. It ranks obviously for this very, very specific keyword that nobody would ever search for, but it won't give me a featured snippet. I tried to replace this set of ontologies that Google has created for my professions. I got the page ranking for the blue link, which was my bonus, but I did not manage to replace those ontologies, which are obviously very, very strong in Google's mind. Then I thought musical instruments, I can probably get this one. So I wrote a text, which instruments do I play? And I made the mistake of saying, Jason Barnard is a double bassist, blah, 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 plays the ukulele. And Google hooked on to ukulele. And you'll notice here that the blue link is not the instrument I play, but the generic title I gave to the page. When I changed it to be the question, that is the meta title and not the H1, I got the question as the blue link, hence, one question answer, 
per page. This is what I found in America. This is brilliant. It's taken my answer, added a ukulele from Amazon, and then added people also search for. It's getting really jiggy very quickly. This was yesterday that I created the page, remember? Then I thought, let's see if I can mess with Google's head a little bit. And it messed with mine. I changed double bassist to plays the double bass and I managed to get Google to change ukulele to double bass within five minutes once again. Then I thought I would see if I could trick it with a Zoigma. Jason Barnard plays the fool and the double bass and it switched back to ukulele because it was sure of the ukulele. Then I thought let's try and get to pluck the ukulele. So I added pluck the ukulele, plays the double bass. What musical instrument does Jason Barnard pluck? Ukulele. At this point, after about three hours of me constantly changing my pages, resubmitting them, Google was still updating in real time, but it started to get confused. Here, it's still gone back to the ukulele. As it was getting more and more confused, it went back to the first thing I said. And that's really important. When you say whatever it is you're going to say and push it into Google, make sure the first information is the correct information, that your phrases, your sentences are structured correctly with the right verbs applying to the right entities and the, indicating the correct relationships between entities on your page using semantic triples. Don't be lazy like I did and just write a text in five minutes. Think about it, analyze, use your brain, write clear, concise texts with semantic triples. But then it started to get annoyed and it kept showing me these. So I got bored because I kept having to fill in, this is a car, this is a bus, this is a traffic light. So I took pity on Google, I took pity on you, and I took pity on me, and I stopped. But for me, this demonstrates how incredibly powerful FAQ can be, how incredibly simple it can be, and how much control it gives you when you're reaching out to clients, potential clients, and people who are about to buy your products. Thank you very much.